It is good to have all of you here, and we are grateful for your presence uh, supporting Harry's family. I'm sure that they are grateful that you are here, and I welcome you on their behalf. And uh, just a couple of things of uh, note before we begin. In front of you in the pews, uh, for you in the front pews, it would be beside you, uh, our hymnals, and you will need them eventually in this service. And so be, please be prepared for that. And uh, at the end of the service, uh, you will be singing a hymn, and there will also be honor guard uh, ceremony outside of the church, and we'll invite you back in for lunch uh, following that. And I'm telling you that now, so when I say that at the end of the service, you will already be prepared. Listen to these words from the Holy Scriptures. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. These were dear words to our departed brother Harry. And he now is experiencing the life eternal. And awaiting like all of us who are in Christ for the final resurrection when Jesus comes again. And what a joyous day that will be. And so we rejoice in the resurrection of Christ, who promises that when we believe in him, we will never die. When King David was praying to the Lord and thanking God for all the provision that God had provided, that they might even return to God what God had given, he was praying this to the Lord. He said, For we are strangers before you and sojourners, as all our fathers were. Our days on earth are like a shadow, and there is no abiding. David recognized that without God's grace, that we have no standing before God whatsoever. And yet God provides great grace for all of us here on this earth and provides even what we return to Him. And we are to be grateful as those who have gone before us were grateful. And these verses, I'm certain, apply to Harry, as he was encompassed by the grace of God. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who loved his appearing. Harry completed the race. The scriptures tell us that Life is 70 years, 80 years if by strength. And we were blessed with his presence with us for 95 years. What a great testimony to God's grace in having him complete the race. From the Revelation writer, John, he wrote, I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Harry has rested from his labors, and he labored right to the last day. The nurses and those that were around him in his apartment knew of his ministry because he made it clear that he wanted them to know the Lord just as he knew the Lord. And then for us as encouragement, I give you these words from the psalmist. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Even though we remember Harry and honor him and look to the Lord and his graciousness in Harry's life, we wait for the Lord still. That one day we will look across that ocean of time. Look to that eternal shore. Where those who have gone before us will be waiting to welcome us home. We who are in Christ Jesus. Let's pray together. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful for all of your goodness towards us, your people your great provision of life on this earth, creating man in your image. 
And though, O oh Lord, we rebelled against you and turned from you in sin, in your graciousness you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to save lost sinners. You sent him, O oh Lord, to live the life that is perfectly righteous. In obedience, he went to the cross, bearing our sin in his body on that tree. And he was raised on the third day, O oh God, the resurrection to eternal life for those who claim Jesus Christ, who are saved by your grace. Lord, may we rejoice in this. May your Holy Spirit come upon us even here, in this place, in this time, that we would rejoice in the resurrection of Christ, your Son. Lord, I ask that you would bless those that are here who are grieving, that you would undergird us, O oh God, as we mourn and lament. And yet, within our souls, O oh God, may you give us great joy in knowing of this eternal life that our departed brother is now experiencing, in which there is no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, and no more death. Father, bless us that you would be glorified and that we might enjoy you forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Harry asks that his obituary be read in this time of uh, remembrance. And so I read to you his obituary. Harry Oscar Nelson of Mora passed away on Monday, July 1, 2013. He was 95 years old. Harry was born on a farm in Del Grove Township in Pine County, Minnesota, to Martin and Anna Nielsen Nelson on February 27, 1918. He attended elementary grade school at Friesland and later attended and graduated from Sandstone High School in 1936. In the summer of 1930, Vacation Bible School was held in the small Presbyterian church in Friesland. And it was here that Harry asked Jesus to come into his life. And later, at a Sunday evening worship service at the Presbyterian Church in Hinckley, Harry felt the Lord calling him into the ministry. This at the time he was attending high school. During the years 1937 to 1942, he and his brother Reiner were involved in a produce trucking and marketing business. In 1942, he was drafted into the military service and served his country in the Army Air Corps in the Pacific Theater, the 7th Air Command, 46th Fighter Squadron, until 1945. In 1946, he enrolled at Northwestern Bible School in Roseville, Minnesota, now the University of Northwestern St. Paul, graduating in 1949. Here he met and courted Jean Smith, also a student there. In 1949, they were married at a Baptist church in Holbert, Michigan. During the next number of years, he and Jean lived in Solon Springs, Wisconsin. In 1950, he enrolled at Wisconsin State College in Superior and also served as student pastor of the Solon Springs and Gordon, Wisconsin Presbyterian churches. In 1954, he graduated from college with a Bachelor of Arts degree. In 1955, the family moved to Andrew, Iowa, where he served the Andrew Presbyterian Church and also attended Dubuque Theological Seminary at Dubuque, Iowa. He was ordained into the Gospel Ministry the same year by the Chippewa Presbytery of Northern, Water, or of Northern Wisconsin. He went on to serve Presbyterian churches in George, Iowa, South Long Lake, Randall, Litchfield, and Fergus Falls, Minnesota. He also served three interim pastorates after retirement, Cambridge, Foley, and Mora, Minnesota. In 1990, Jean passed away after a lingering battle with breast cancer. In 1991, he remarried. Alice Reynolds was a member of and church organist of the Mora Presbyterian Church. Her husband had passed away also in 1990. By the kindly suggestion of mutual friends, playing Cupid, Harry took their advice of taking Alice out for coffee. They discovered they had much in common, 
and were married on August 3, 1991. Alice passed away in 2011. Harry loved people and loved to minister to their spiritual needs. He also had a love for the outdoors, especially fishing, hunting, and camping. He was preceded in death by both of his wives, Jean and Alice, his parents, two brothers, Reiner and Vernon. Harry is survived by two sons, Bruce and wife Anita of Litchfield, Minnesota, Don of Ramsey, Minnesota, two daughters, Betty and husband Joe Field of Ramsey, Minnesota, and Cheryl and husband Brian Seifert of Coon Rapids, Minnesota. Eleven grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren, two brothers, Norman and wife Carol, and Carl, all of Hinckley, and sister-in-law, Carolyn Nelson of Lionel Lakes. He is also survived by four stepchildren, Robert and Sandra Reynolds of Malmo, Randy and Carol Reynolds of Mora, Richard and Mary Reynolds of Mora, and Rebecca and Jay Flatabo of Willerney, Minnesota, plus many nieces, nephews, and other relatives and friends. We are now attending the funeral service here at the First Presbyterian Church with the Reverend Dwayne Fowler, Dr. Kevin Carr, Reverend Ivan Fisk officiating. Music is provided by Becky Flatabo, Dee Dee Johnson, Dwayne and Robinette Fowler, Randy and Carol Reynolds, and Gordon Halston. Hall bearers are Seth Nelson, Reese Nelson, Travis Johnson, Jordan Seifert, and Johan Lotriet. There were many honorary pallbearers. Military honors were provided by the Mora American Legion. Interment is at the Evergreen Memorial Cemetery in Friesland, Minnesota. Memorials preferred to the University of Northwestern St. Paul. Arrangements by Ackerman Ingebrand Funeral Home. What a life that we are here to remember in the name of Christ. Please take out your hymnals found in front of you or beside you, turn to number 244. Number 244, Jesus, what a friend we have in sinners, and you may stand.
I just turned 62 this year, and the government tells me I can retire. But then there's Harry. Yeah. <laughs> Harry has always been an encouragement to me in this regard as he stayed in the saddle so long. There is a picture that says retirement, but that was only when he gave up the captaincy. He continued to be a deckhand for many, many years. Ministers don't retire. Christians shouldn't retire. The work of the ministry goes on to the end of our days. Harry was called upon to serve at a funeral as early as late as, what, two, three months ago. He continued well into his 90s, leading Bible studies, preaching at nursing homes, and always shared with me the joy that he had in uh, teaching the Word of God, the character studies that were uh, such a joy to his heart as he led them here at uh, First Presbyterian. It's easy to fall into the trap of seeking to canonize, make a saint out of one such as Harry. Though he was a saint as all who are in Christ are saints of God by faith in Jesus Christ. So we can say that much. But he was a sinner. He understood what Paul said in Romans, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. He understood also that it says in Romans that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's Harry knew these things because he knew of God's love, that God's love is demonstrated for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Harry was impassioned with making Christ known because he knew that if we believe, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we'll be, we will be saved. God, by His grace, empowers us that we might live lives that are transformed. We are called upon not to submit our body, to submit our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, and this is our reasonable act of service. And this was, in essence, what Harry was about. Now, it was a surprise to me uh, late last week when I learned that I was included in the funeral, but it was a delight and I considered a great honor. Larry, uh, Harry indeed was beloved of <coughs> the cadre of ministers here and many, many more beyond us. He was beloved because he was an encourager to those who were uh, his younger ministerial colleagues. He assigned me scripture reading, message, and remark. I don't know what message means because that's already given over to uh, Pastor Dwayne. Uh, but I will perhaps maybe make some remarks about what I think uh, how Harry's life was a message to us and include my remarks there. I will allow his life to stand as a message to us. My remembrances of Harry are many. They go all the way back to my first coming to the Hinckley area back in 1989. I can't remember when I first met him, but it was well, it was probably within that first year as people were introducing me to the principals around the Hinckley, Mora, Canabic County, Pine County area. Uh, I know that Harry uh, has spoken at our church a number of times upon my request for pulpit supply, wild game dinners, various and sundry other occasions. Um, my remembrance of him, remembrances of him fall into uh, several different categories. And um, first, I, re I remember Harry as certainly and simply as a family man. Um, I've often thought about the family from which he came, his own parents. He raised five sons to the glory of God, all who confessed faith in Christ, who married godly women, who raised their children for Christ. Where we, we see in this family of which Harry was a part, generations having given their life to Christ and, and going on. What a joy, what a legacy. Larry, Harry is part of that legacy, but he is also included in that legacy as well. Of God's faithfulness through 
God's covenantal family ties. I have enjoyed knowing uh, Harry's children. I have enjoyed hunting with them. I have enjoyed fellowship with them, sharing many common things together. I also remember Harry as an outdoorsman, and who, who doesn't? His love for hunting and his love for fishing. But that was really an extension of his love for the glory of God. Harry was in tr true indeed a quintessential outdoorsman. He enjoyed these things. Uh, I had the privilege and anyone who hunts knows that this is a privilege of standing in his deer stand. He gave it over to me on several occasions. I've hunted with Harry. I have fished with Harry on the Lax Lake on a number of different occasions. And what do ministers talk about when they sit in a boat all day long? Well, they talk about the ministry. They talk about the Lord. They talk about fishing. They talk about a lot of things. It was there that Harry first voiced his loneliness, having lost his first bride. It was also in a fishing boat that he shared with me that he had met someone new and was contemplating a possible future with Alice. So many wonderful memories that we enjoyed together along with my sons. I also remember Harry as a churchman, a man of the church. We long for statesmen, statesmen and women, do we not, in the political realm. We see so precious little of that kind of concern for the well-being of the population at large. But a churchman gives his interests and his passions to the growth, the development, the benefit of the Church of Christ. And for Harry, that was his passion to the end of the day. He wanted to see the church strong. He wanted to see it rooted in the Word of God. He wanted to see its people grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. And he knew this was accomplished by the ministry of the Word and the power of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. And he never ceased to remember his calling. He never ceased to stop ministry. Harry was a sort of go-to guy for uh, minister and congregant alike when there were questions, when there was need of counsel. And his legacy is uh, seen even before the days that the Lord took him to be with himself. More than that, and more than all of this, I remember Harry as a gospel man. A gospel man. Never ceased to love the saving grace of God. I'm told that was his final words. Oh, what a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior we have. His greatest satisfaction was when he was teaching the Word of God, such as the characters of the Bible, the book of the Bible, whether it be here or over at St. Clair's. He loved more than that, more than being a Bible man, but being a gospel man, because he knew that the central message of the Scriptures was a message of life in Jesus' name to all of those who would trust him. And he never lost sight of that. That didn't diminish when he had his retirement harsh. In fact, it only redoubled his efforts as God gave him opportunity to encourage that. Harry died as he lived with a profound, profound sense of gratitude for the wonderful Savior that bought him, saved him, renewed him, and now completely owns him. And may you know that wonderful Savior too before these days are through. I asked Harry one day when he received, I said, Harry, when you received orders to Iwo Jima, what was the first thought that came to your mind? And he said, my first thought was I was dead. The legacy and the loss of that 
bitter volcanic cinder was burned into his memory and the very assignment there he thought would end his life. But he survived and served there nine months, I'm told. I asked him also in the follow-up when you heard that Japan had surrendered, what was your first thought? I'm going home. A young man, early 20s, sometimes at war you think your life has come to an end. And here we are, 90 some years later, or 60, 70 some years later, and that God preserved him for a legacy that your presence here is a testimony to the grace of God. I thought for the reading of scripture, at least my portion today, a fitting chapter would be found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 4, uh, to give a statement of the gospel ministry. And I think there are many things here that touch on this occasion. So I will read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the entire chapter, all 18 verses. Let us hear God's word. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We are always, we always carry around in our bodies the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that this, so that his life might be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. With the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Swelling time. 
master of his kindly beaming eye. How my full heart will praise him for the mercy, love, and grace that prepared for me a mansion in the sky. I shall know him, I shall know him as we
writing about A.D. 95 to 96, listen to the word of God coming through the Apostle John. And they saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And they saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Verse 22. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it, and its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. No night. <clears throat> They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. By the grace of God, may we hear these words, and may all come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. May all find their names written in the Lamb's book of life.
have found this particular quote and have used it in funerals past. And there are many people for whom it is appropriate. And in this particular case for Harry, up until his last day in his own apartment, when he was with his family and with those people who attended to him daily in uh, his home, this would hold true. This is what the quote is, I don't have an author. Believers should long for heaven like a prisoner longs for freedom. Like a sick man longs for health. Like a hungry man longs for food. Like a thirsty man longs for a drink. Like a poor man longs for a payday. And like a soldier longs for peace. Hope and courage in facing death is the last opportunity for Christians to exhibit their faith in God. To prove their hope of heaven is genuine and to adorn their confidence in the promises of God. When we hear that Harry's last words, as, heaven, as Kevin said earlier, were what a wonderful Savior, giving that witness and testimony to his family that that's where his hope lies, or laid. He proved his hope of heaven was genuine. In conversation after conversation with me and with others who visited him in the last month or so, he was always very clear that he is ready to go home. And he never made any excuses that he wanted to be with the Lord. Just that he loved him. And he was ready. His hope of heaven was genuine. And it certainly adorned him to his dying day. Harry had uh, two favorite verses. One of them is printed in the uh, brochure that is given by the funeral home. It's from Romans. The other is Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. And I want to just share a bit about both of those. Isaiah 26, verses 3 and 4 says, You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an everlasting rock. Harry had this perfect peace. Because as you know, as my brothers have testified, and as you will testify to each other, Harry's mind was stayed on Christ. Everything about Harry, even in his recreation, even in his raising of his family, attending to his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, his friends, I have a sense that Always, he was always headed to Christ when he treated you and me and others in the great grace and love that he showed. Because a mind that has stayed on God is in perfect peace. I've never known Harry to be in much of turmoil at all. I'm sure your family, as family, probably had his moments of maybe anger, indiscipline, but it was because he loved Christ that he loved you and disciplined you as a father. Harry had perfect peace because he trusted in God. Even before going to his eternal home, he had perfect peace. And now he is resting in that peace in great measure, enjoying the Lord whom he trusted. Because as the verse goes on, it says, the Lord God is an everlasting rock. He does not fail. He is sure. His promises are always true and always fulfilled. His covenant with his people in Jesus Christ can never fail. Harry is enjoying the fruit of the salvation found in Jesus Christ alone. It is a fruit that is born through the sacrifice of the Savior who bore our sin on the cross. 
for all who believe in Jesus Christ. Truly, what a wonderful Savior. And as you have heard already from my brothers, that Harry's stories were good. He always had a story of the outdoors, of fishing or hunting, or of his uh, children and grandchildren and their next steps in life. And as much as he enjoyed telling those stories, it, his favorite story is the gospel. It's the greatest story ever told. His other favorite verse, the one printed in your brochure from the funeral home, is Romans 1.16. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Beautiful sentiment when you see where Harry's heart was and is. As I was visiting with Harry on the Friday before his death, Anita was there and Don was there. And we were enjoying Harry's company. Cheryl, you were there too, weren't you? Where are you? Were you, were you there that day too? Yes, you were. And we were sharing and we got on the conversation of Harry's life. And we got to talking about the ripples that Harry has begun, but don't end with him. And they didn't begin with him. The legacy was before Harry. The legacy was even before Harry's family. The legacy is Christ. And when he was talking to a very wealthy man working for a very prominent com company in the rural parts of Wisconsin, a man who heard Harry speak and said, I need to know more about this Jesus. And Harry sat with him around his dining room table and told him of Christ. From that moment, the ripples started in that direction of that man, just as they did to Harry's children and grandchildren and so on. But the ripples were always Christ and the gospel. And he was not ashamed and he was not afraid to share it, even to those in the nursing home, to those out in the community. You are a testimony to Harry by being here. And I am certain that Harry as much as he would appreciate your testimony to him, would prefer that your testimony be to Christ. The Christ that he served. The Christ gospel for the salvation for all who believe. He would call upon you, even in this moment, to repent of your sin and turn towards Christ. If you don't know the Savior, to stop your rebellion. Pray for that salvation that comes from Christ the Lord. For he'd want to see you on that far shore coming in the final day, welcoming you to the beauty of heaven, where there is no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, and no more death. That's the message he would want you to know, and I know that because the songs that you've heard sung, the men that he chose to help in this service, and the things that he planned point to one thing, the gospel of Jesus Christ that saved him and is available to all who will claim Christ as their Lord and Savior. Let's pray together. Father God, only you are immortal, and you are the creator and maker of all. O oh Lord, we are mortal and finite. You formed us from the earth, and to the earth we return. And you even ordained this, O oh God, when you created your people, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. O oh Lord, we do go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah, what a wonderful Savior. For we who are in Christ, that is our song. O oh Lord, I ask that you would grant best to your servant with all your saints who are gathered around you even this day and those that will return to you one day. <coughs> to that life everlasting. 
Oh Lord, we are here though, still in the affliction of this life. We ask that you would grant your sustaining grace to this family that is grieving, these friends who are lamenting loss. That you would bless us, O oh God, with the joy of heaven in the midst of sorrow. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What are your songs of? When you think of old timers, both Harry and I grew up on the farm. We know what responsibilities are on the farm, the experiences, what we had, and so forth. And the fun of outdoor life, hunting, fishing, and all those things. Finding our own games, making our own games. Whenever I visited Harry and he saw me someplace, we always talked about those experiences and events. But always, always, we shared the gospel together. And I will always remember Harry as a very faithful God's servant, always ready. And uh, special memories for me, and I'm delighted to be able to share a little Swedish uh, in this service, thinking about Harry and the families and, and the, not, the brothers and so forth, the whole family. Posvenska in Swedish, our heritage. And uh, the song that he selected is The Pearly Gates. He, the pearly gates, will open. <laughs>
For about 10 years, Harry came in once a week to visit me in my office. And I know all of you better than you think. Maybe <laughs> some <laughs> 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 Immediately following the singing of Because He Lives, uh, we will be heading out the main doors to uh, have the honor guard give military honors to uh, departed brother Harry. And immediately following that, you're invited to come back in and go to our lower level fellowship hall for lunch. And when the family is ready, then we will head out to Friesland to the cemetery for committing Harry's body to you. And so I hope you will join in whichever ones you, parts of those things you uh, choose. The family would certainly be welcoming you into any of those arenas and uh, just take note of the order of things. If you're not familiar with our church building and you come in for the luncheon downstairs, there is an elevator by the main entrance. And so if you're in need of that, please use that. Otherwise, just outside the sanctuary to the north uh, is the stairway to the basement as well. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid says the Lord. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And I would ask that you would join in singing hymn number 292, 292, and please stand. 